Have you ever been so mad or sad that you thought, God, I just want to die? If so, you're not alone. In fact, the Bible has many stories about people who have felt this way. Their stories are rough and filled with deep emotions of unforgiveness, bitterness, or grief, and they're so relatable to our own lives. In this video, we're going to dive into the story of Jonah, the guy that you learned about in Sunday school when you were a kid who was swallowed by a whale. He battled with these same emotions, and as we witness his struggles, we're gonna see some amazing new perspectives about ourselves and God. There are exciting things that we may never have seen before. Let's begin Jonah's story after the whale spit him out into dry land, when he finally and reluctantly obeyed God's command to travel to Nineveh, a depraved city that was teeming with sin. With a sickening glee, Jonah preached God's message. 40 more days and Nineveh will be destroyed as he relished in the thought of the city's imminent destruction. The problem was that Jonah's message boiled inside an inferno of unforgiveness in his own heart. After all, there was no call to turn from your ways or you need to worship God. Instead, his heart seed with hatred towards the Ninevites and he longed to see them obliterated just like the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. The huge surprise is how the Ninevites responded. The Bible says that from the poorest person to the king, every Ninevite fasted and poured ashes over their heads in fear and repentance. Can we even imagine if a modern day preacher could convince us to do that? It would be an unparalleled step towards God. Neighbors shaking hands, tears of sorrow, relationships restored. We'd have a victory celebration. And at this, the book of Jonah should have had an ending with something like, and Jonah returned to Israel rejoicing. But not for Jonah, no sir. Instead, he climbed the hill that overlooked Nineveh to watch hail, fire, or an earthquake swallow them. And when it never happened, Jonah was so furious that he even told God, just kill me now, Lord. I'd rather be dead than alive. Incredibly, we get to see how Jonah, a self-righteous religious guy, wanted violence. The very violence that Jonah abhorred about the Ninevites is what also smoldered inside of him. First, he hates the Ninevites. Now he's furious at God for his mercy. And after all, he must have reasoned, well, these people were still pagans. They were still uncircumcised, still had not converted to Judaism, and still did not call God Yahweh. All these Ninevites did was repent, most likely because they were simply scared. It was hardly even a baby step in the right direction, yet God spared them. So Jonah told God, let me die. I'm better off dead than alive. Let's pause Jonah's story to see how often we're just like him, even when people simply think differently than we do. In our modern world, think of the high levels of divisiveness in politics, racial tensions, vaccine or gender issues. We have such deep anger. Many of us feel like we have a sense of moral superiority, the same way that Jonah did as we say, we are not like those people. After all, we are respectable, we follow the rules, and we have certain values. Now, for the best part of today's video, Let's go back to where Jonah cries to God in anger, kill me now. Amazingly, God responds in a new way that you wouldn't think of. He gently asks Jonah a question. Is it right for you to be angry? What a question from God. Think about it, Jonah. Who are you to be angry? Don't you remember how you chose to disobey me? How you almost drowned, but I had a whale swallow you to save you? How you too are so angry towards all those people that you don't even know. Now, let's bring this story back to us. Is it right for us to be so angry? Who gave us the right to put ourselves in a morally superior camp? Can we really step into someone else's shoes and say, well, if I had their background, environment, and influences, I'd never act the way that they did. Perhaps 
Instead of getting so mad at others, we need to take a new look at ourselves and remember that we, yes, you and me, are sinners who are only saved by the grace of God. We don't have the right to be angry, but it gets even better because when we remember that God loves us, we no longer have the need to be angry anymore. Suddenly, all the offenses against us are reduced in size. Suddenly, it seems possible for us, too, to offer grace. Two things are for certain. First is that forgiveness and grace are complicated issues. And second is that unforgiveness is a cancer. There is no magic pill, but before this video ends, we hope you'll choose one of these two recommended videos and take the next step towards finding freedom and forgiveness. And if you want to really go deep, and cure the cancer of unforgiveness in your heart and in your life once and for all, visit curethecancer.org. We'll see you there.